Hi, let's revisit what we have learned so far. When it comes to databases, we have relational databases. They have acid support. It's atomic in nature, consistency, isolation, and it provides you durability. And it also supports relational hierarchy. When it comes to relational, we have two options, Cloud SQL and Cloud Spanner. Cloud SQL, is a, which is a managed SQL variant, uh, it provides vertical scaling. Whereas Cloud Spanner provides everything Cloud SQL provides, plus it provides horizontal scaling. On the NoSQL side, NoSQL flexible schemas, wide column, key value pair, document databases, case based databases, the different options. Uh, we looked at Bigtable, which is a wide column DB. Uh, it also has edge based interface, so it's a good adoption for a lot of big data projects. Memory Store, which is a managed Redis in memory data store. Fire Store, which is a document NoSQL, and then it's also used for mobile and web client. Now that leaves us to analytical kind of use cases. So there is a requirement for building a data warehouse and business intelligence use cases where you want to ingest all of the data at one place so that all of the reporting tools can connect to that data and uh, give you actionable insights. Also, you want to do analysis on batch as well as real-time data. You want to create a store where you can sync everything, source from everywhere. So it's got nothing to do with the specific structure of data, nothing to do with, again, a specific way to define that data, but any data in any format, you should be able to sync it in and make it available for others to use it. You need a place where you can run BI reports, machine learning, uh, machine learning models. So typically uh, in the on-prem world, we used to have a lot of solutions uh, for data warehousing. But uh, on cloud, there are some specific offerings from different cloud uh, uh, platforms for their cloud data warehouses. In Google or within Google, the option is BigQuery. So let's let's try to understand this space now. So what is BigQuery? BigQuery is Google Cloud's fully managed. By fully managed, what it means that it's serverless, it's completely serverless. You don't have to manage any infrastructure behind it. It's a petabyte scale and cost-effective analytics data warehouse. If you, if you understand the OLTP or OLAP uh, space, it's meant for OLAP kind of use cases, analytical use cases that helps you manage and analyze data with built-in features like machine learning, geospatial analysis, and business intelligence. Now, let's look at uh, the architecture of BigQuery. So BigQuery's serverless architecture decouples storage and compute. So you can see this is the storage bit of it. This is the compute bit of it. And they are connected via a petabit network. You can ingest data as a stream. You can load batch or bulk data. And these are the different ways you can access this. Uh, through SQL compliant clients, REST API, Web UI or CLI, and then you have client libraries in, in about seven, seven languages. Now, the decoupling of storage and compute actually allows BigQuery to scale independently on demand. This structure offers both immense flexibility and cost control for customers because they don't need to keep their expensive compute resources up and running all the time. And this is very different from a traditional node-based cloud data warehouse solutions or even on-premises uh, MPP-based systems. This approach allows customers 
to bring in any size of their data into data warehouse and start analyzing their data without worrying about database operations and system engineering. Now let's dig a bit deeper into uh, BigQuery architecture. So under the hood, uh, BigQuery employs a vast set of multi-tenant services driven by low-level Google infrastructure, technologies like Dremel, Colossus, Jupyter, and Borg. So if you look at this architecture, compute is Dremel. So Dremel is compute. It's a large multi-tenant cluster that executes SQL queries. So all of the SQL queries, they get executed at this level. Dremel turns SQL into sort of an execution tree. The leaves of the tree are called slots. And to do the heavy lifting of reading data from storage and any necessary computation, the branches of this tree are called mixers, which perform the aggregation. Now, any time uh, when, when you're looking to purchase BigQuery or use it for your organization, it's basically the slots is how, uh, you know, your pricing comes into picture. So based on the different uh, number of slots that you buy and you use those slots, which is uh, basically this whole execution uh, tree and the, and the leaves on that tree. So which in turn is about the processing power of it. Then storage is Colossus. Colossus, which is the Google's global storage system. Uh, it it uh, leverages the columnar storage format and compression algorithm to store data. And it's optimized for reading large amount of structured data. Then you have Jupyter in between, which is the petabit network, and that connects Dremel and Colossus, which in the sense is compute and storage network. And then BigQuery is orchestrated by Borg, which is Google's precursor to Kubernetes. So before Google built Kubernetes, uh, it was using Borg. And the mixers and the slots, they are all run by Borg, which allocates hardware resources. Now, the most important control that you can have on BigQuery is basically how you write a query because the costing is determined by the amount of data it's processing. So you need to be very diligent in terms of writing the specific queries. So you can limit the amount of data processed. So select a star from is definitely not a good option for uh, BigQuery. With that, let's uh, look at how you can use BigQuery. So BigQuery can be accessed in multiple ways using the GCP console, command line tool, BQ, by, by using REST APIs. And then you can use the client libraries such as Java, .NET, or Python. Now, while loading data into um, BigQuery, you can either create a new table or append to or overwrite an existing table. So this is a typical um, structure, how you will look at uh, loading data. So here is your data. You will use the gsutil command to put that data into cloud storage. And then from there, you can use BQ tool to pull that data into BigQuery. Similarly, you can do that from web UI console. You, from web UI console, you can load this data directly. And then you'll, you can use BigQuery APIs to actually query that data. And that qu query result can be used outside. If you look at the interface, it's a, it's a very intuitive interface. So you have a query editor, like in, in fact, you can think of any SQL client. You write a SQL query, uh, it will give you a result. 
And at the same time, it will give you that what was the time elapsed and what was the amount of data that it processed. So as evident in, in this particular example, it takes less than two seconds to analyze uh, in this particular case, 28 gigabytes of data and, and return the results. BigQuery engine is actually very smart to read only the columns required to execute the query. Now, the best thing about BigQuery is this is what you use. You bring your data and then you write queries and you know you, you get your results. You don't have to worry about where this query is running, how it is running, what sort of compute required to run this query or any of the operational overhead. You just bring in your data and you execute your query. With that, let's uh, look at what are the different uh, ways you can actually bring data into, into BigQuery. So there are many different ways. Uh, for file, CSV, or JSON, or Avro kind of data, the process we looked at, you pull that data into cloud st storage using gsutil command or any of the client libraries and then from cloud storage you will push it to bigquery using bq command then you can use the data transfer services so bigquery has a data uh, transfer services to transfer data from sas applications so you can use uh, SAS um, DTS connectors to pull data from Google Maps, YouTube, and uh, uh, there's a long list of SAS products, marketing products, uh, and a lot of uh, products from where using the connector, you can ingest data into BigQuery, or you can use the partner DTS connectors as well. Then apart from that, Data Fusion is Google's ETL tool. Uh, any database that it supports a plugin or a connector, you can use those connectors uh, from a lot of different kind of databases to pull direct data directly into BigQuery. Then from SAP point of view, you have SAP data services that you can use to ingest data directly into BigQuery. And then apart from that, you have the partner integration with a lot of uh, marketplace ETL tools like Informatica, Fivetran, or Confluent, which you can use to push data into BigQuery. Now, what are the other, uh, some of the very unique features of BigQuery? BigQuery provides uh, multi-cloud capabilities in the sense of BigQuery Omni, which is in preview. It allows you to analyze data across clouds using standard SQL and without leaving BigQuery's familiar interface. Then it has built-in machine learning and AI integration. So besides bringing machine learning to data with BigQuery ML, integration with Vertex AI, uh, which is again the managed platform for entire machine learning lifecycle, and TensorFlow enables you to train and execute powerful models on structured data in minutes, just uh, with just SQL. So this is very important feature that you can run machine learning model from SQL dialect. BI engine, so to accelerate BI workloads. So anytime you have data warehouse, it's uh, BI tools will be integrating with that data like uh, Tableau. So you can turn on BI engine. It's an in-memory analysis service to achieve sub-second query response time and high concurrency for popular BI tools. So any BI tool which uses ODBC or JDBC connection, you can hook that into BigQuery uh, through BI Engine. Connected Sheets, it allows users to analyze billions of rows of live BigQuery data in Google Sheets without uh, knowing SQL. So it's a very handy tool for business users to play around with data. Geospatial data types. 
So BigQuery GIS, it combines the serverless architecture of BigQuery with native support for geospatial analysis. So you can uh, augment your analytical workflows with location intelligence. Federation, federation is very important. BigQuery can process external data sources in object storage like cloud storage for different file formats like Parquet, ORC, transactional databases like Bigtable, Cloud SQL, or spreadsheets in, uh, in your Google Drive. All this can be done without moving the data to BigQuery. The last one is public data sets. And this is, very, this is a very useful feature. Google Cloud's uh, you know, public data set repository offers a powerful data repository of more than 200 high demand public data sets from different industries. And these data sets are available for you to import into or attach into your uh, BigQuery projects. And you can straight away start querying that and you can query up to one terabyte of data per month at no cost. Now with this, let's let's quickly take a look at uh, BigQuery uh, console. This is a very familiar interface of BigQuery. You have SQL workspace and the data transfer methods, and you can also schedule queries. SQL workspace is is pretty much uh, the project that you create and the 200 plus uh, public data sets that, that's available to you. It's very easy to load data into, into your project. You can just click on add data and add and you can follow through that in, in the lab section. Now, when we come onto this side, the SQL query is like any SQL compliant standard query. You run this query and it will give you the results. At the same time, it will give you all the stats that this query processed these many megabytes. Uh, how long did it take for the query to execute? And then you can save the results and explore the data out of the box itself. So with that, it's very easy to bring data into BigQuery and that's it. You don't have to worry about any infrastructure management or worrying about how the queries are run. You can start writing your query and start getting the results. And apart from that, as we talked about, it has some amazing and unique features to make your cloud data warehouse much more than what a typical analytical uh, data warehouse solution will do. Let's look at uh, a perspective on all of the cloud data warehouse solutions that's available in the market. So when we look at uh, AWS Redshift, Redshift is based on concept of nodes, which are again, virtual nodes, but you need to deploy, configure and manage them. So there is leader node and then you have compute nodes. When you come to Azure side, Azure SQL Data Warehouse or the uh, Synapse Analytics is again a cloud-based, but you have control node and then you have compute nodes. What it does is that it leverages a MPP architecture to process poly-based T-SQL queries. Then you have Snowflake, which is a managed data warehouse as a service that can be deployed on AWS or Azure infrastructure. Snowflake also separates compute and storage resources and makes use of an MPP architecture behind the scenes. But at the time of deployment, you have to select a pre-configured virtual data warehouses in in various sizes like small to medium to large and extra largest so it's kind of a t-shirt sizing and it also provides you a separate virtual warehouse for ingesting the data now when we look at the 
Google BigQuery, nothing you have to manage. As long as you can bring in your data, you bring in your data and then you just start writing queries. So you don't have to worry about any of the underlying infrastructure or any operation or anything to do with node or node configuration. So Google BigQuery is truly a serverless cloud data warehouse solution, which gives you analytical capability and more. So to put it into perspective, why BigQuery is a clear winner when it comes to cloud data warehouse solutions is elimination of upfront investment and planning. BigQuery serverless design is built monthly with flexible on-demand or flat rate pricing, which is based on slots. It gives you a reduction in operational expenses. It eliminates the need to manage virtual enterprise data warehouse nodes, as well as the need to monitor, troubleshoot, updates, uh, tune, or any plan for growth. It scales up or down as needed to meet the changing um, needs of your data. It uh, also reduces the time spent on like ETL management or new schema modifications. And it provides you native AI ML support with native integration with most of its uh, Google's cloud services. So I hope this was useful. Thank you.